Welcome back to Psalms Today, looking at Psalm 92. It might not be immediately obvious when you read through Psalm 92, but there is something a little bit unusual. Verse 8, let me show it to you. But you, O Lord, are on high forever. What's unusual about that is that it's lacking a second line. It's just a one-line verse. And typically in Psalms, in Hebrew poetry, you're going to have two lines per verse, sometimes three or even four, but uh, typically two and very rarely one. What makes this even more striking is that before and after there are 15 lines on both sides. And so this one really does come at the center point, right at sort of a hinge to the whole psalm. Well, what do we have in the seven verses before and then again in the seven verses after? Uh, it's kind of nicely structured. Before, you've got three verses that are giving us the call to praise, followed by four verses telling us why. Look at the language here. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High. That's going to come up again. To declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night, to the music of the lute and the harp, to the melody of the lyre. And then it goes on, kind of on the other side of that, to give reasons why God should be praised. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work. At the work of your hands I sing for joy. How great are your works, O Lord. Your thoughts are very deep, and on it goes. And so you've got a classic call to praise that it's good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises, to declare his steadfast love and his faithfulness from morning to night. You've got all the classic two-line thoughts going on here, the connections between um, concepts, the, uh, the sort of extent of time references, you've got the musical instruments, and then we've got a reason why. For you have done these things. Once we get to the second half of the psalm, we have uh, three verses describing the destruction of the wicked, and then the final four verses uh, that are giving to us uh, a very classic psalms kind of an image. Here's the fruitfulness of the righteous. The righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. So we've got this uh, tree language coming in. They are planted in the house of the Lord. And they flourish in the courts of our God. You can just see the parallelism all the way through this, the courts, the house, planted and flourish. They still bear fruit in old age. They are ever full of sap and green, just like Psalm 1. Remember uh, in uh, Psalm 1, oh, what would it be about verse 3? The description of the righteous one bears its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Here we've got this bearing fruit and uh, this kind of evergreen notion to declare that the Lord is upright. And then to finish off the psalm, not a reference to the Most High, but connected, he is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. And so all the way through, you can see how these two lines, uh, kind of two line parallelisms are working, doing what they do in Hebrew poetry, which is what makes verse eight stand out. That verse right in the center of the psalm, but you, O Lord, are on high forever. I wonder what it would look like in our lives to uh, allow everything about our life to kind of wrap around a central truth, a central reality. How about this one? You, O Lord, are on high forever. Have a look at Psalm 92. See how that verse 8 sits right in the middle as a hinge. It sort of connects to what's gone before and connects to what's coming after. And really the whole psalm calling us to praise God calling us to have confidence in him because of his kindness to us, because of his destruction of the enemy, because of the fruitfulness that we can experience in life. But all, all of that flowing from who he is and his position, where he's at in, in the realm of reality that we live in. Take a look at Psalm 92. Have a look at the two line parallelisms. But more than that, see how this psalm encourages your heart. See how it stirs you to praise, to worship, to trust, and then share Psalm 92 with others.